Uh, hello, Dust Creations family. Uh, welcome uh, to this video. My name, my name is Bagalia Steven. I'm a civil engineer by profession, uh, but also very passionate about design, uh, structural design, and also, of course, engineering design. So it is out of that passion uh, that you see these creations on the channel. This video is uh, a design of a villa, a design we did uh, for a family in Entebbe. Uh, it's a, it has ground and first floor level, a two level building. Um, we are going to look at the impressions, but today we are also going a little deeper. We are going to look at uh, the architectural drawings, uh, structural drawings and uh, the quantities, the materials of this villa so that we have a picture of uh, the cost implication of this villa uh, so that is going to be the order you can see the impression is already running the architectural impressions of the villa uh, what we are having on our screen currently uh, after the impressions are done entirely we are going to discuss the architectures, our structures, and then the estimated cost of the villa. We are breaking this cost down into a material schedule so that we look at the, the material at an individual level and at every stage of the construction. Uh, so to briefly summarize this design, uh, we have uh, four bedrooms, we have uh, two sitting or living rooms, we have a dining area, we have a kitchen, we have a laundry room, we have a garage, we have a, a volute stair. This is the stair taking us to, of course, the first level, the first floor. Uh, to me, the volute stair, as the designer, it was uh, my centerpiece for the design. I enjoyed it most. So, I don't know about you, you can always tell me what stood out for you, but for me, it was the volute stair. Uh, this video is going to be slightly longer than usual, but also more informative. So please bear with me and uh, walk through with me to the very end. Thank you. Uh, enjoy, enjoy the, enjoy the watch. These are our drawings that submitted for approval. So on the first page here we have uh, a general layout that is showing the entire layout of the, of the area. So we have the main house, like you've seen in the impressions, we have uh, the servant block. Uh, this is a two block unit. One unit is supposed to be used as a servant room and the other room is supposed to be used as the outside kitchen. This is the VIP latrine and shower. This is a two stands and one shower. Uh, this space is to be used for gardening. Uh, the client wants uh, a bit of gardening space, like perhaps to put there some of uh, things like matoke and, and small, small homegrown uh, greeneries. Uh, so at the front, you see we have uh, this is uh, we have a gate, we have a uh, Paved area leading to the garage. We have a greenery with a few trees out there. This is the access road. Uh, like I was telling you, this is our ground floor here. Uh, you can see the dimensions of the rooms. These dimensions are in millimeters. Uh, if you have interacted with drawings, you know that that is the standard we use in, in Uganda as you submit 
submit our drawings in the metric scale. So these are millimeters. So you can appreciate how big uh, the rooms are. Uh, we had to fit uh, all components into the client space. So this is how we put everything and made sure it was fitting into the space. So this is the ground floor plan. This is the first floor plan. You can see this is the volute stair I was telling you about. You come and climb up from here. Uh, of course, you reach, you begin uh, at the lobby, the upstairs lobby. Uh, this side is the family room. As you go this side is the master bedroom. We have a study room. It is uh, close to the master bedroom, but it's, it's more like in the center of, of the space. Everyone can access it easily. Uh, girls bedroom, boys bedroom, uh, this is our balcony, common balcony. Uh, then this is uh, the common bathroom for the upstairs people. Uh, these are elevations uh, of, the, of the drawings of our house. And then uh, we have a section here. This is a section across the house. Uh, these are basically mostly for the technical people to help out in the implementation and make sure the design is, uh, is implemented to the detail. Uh, these are the details of the volute stair, that fancy stair you saw in the impressions. This is a uh, these are the, the dimensions that are going to help in the execution and implementation to make sure it comes out as beautifully as you saw it. Uh, this is a roof plan to help out in the roofing. And now this is uh, this page is basically for the servant block. We have the plan, the section, and then the elevations. Uh, this page is for the latrine, uh, all the details of the latrine, the two stands here, two stands I was totally telling you about, uh, with the shower. All its elevations are shown. Uh, right here is a window schedule, and a door schedule of uh, those we have. Then now this is the septic tank, and it's Details, all the details of the drainage are in here. Uh, yes, that is it. That is what we have for the sections. Uh, so we are now moving to uh, structures. There is not a lot to say here. Most of uh, most of the things are really technical, but let's just. Uh, rush through and uh, see what we have so uh, we have the foundation layout this one shows how the, the columns are going to sit the plinth wall alignment how it's running the sizes of the footing then you have a ground beam this is basically to brace the structure against our uh, sweat we have the first floor we have the roof floor beam layout uh, these are details um, about the columns and and all structure members, like you can see. So basically, details about structure structure members. So let's close this and move on to the next section. Uh, so we are now moving uh, to the to the quantities, the estimated quantities. These are being presented as a, in the form of a material schedule. Material schedule is, a, it is basically a simplified BO2. A BO2 is normally more general and it, is, it states uh, quantities in terms of uh, in larger units. Like for example, for example, if it's a wall, a BO2 would speak of uh, square meters of the wall but you see as a client this does not tell you how much cement you're going to need or how much 
blocks of which we're going to need. So the material shed we now breaks down from the BO2 to the small nitty gritties of the material that is going to be needed for whatever member. So we have basically divided our material schedule into different sections. We have a, the first section which is a substructure and it represents everything up to the ground slab. We have uh, the ground and first floor columns and block work in that section. We have the section of first floor beams, roof beams and natals. Uh, we have first floor slab and stair. We have the roofing section. We have finishes. And then we have windows and doors. Uh, those are the sections we are handling in this material schedule. Uh, so, basically to go through the, the material, we have cement, we have sand, we have aggregate, we have bricks, we have upan. Upan is very important when you are doing your masonry wall. This is a, this is a flat metallic place that are put in the masonry wall. Uh, so, this is very important when you're doing your block wall. As a plant, when you go to your site, make sure the mansions are putting these hoopans, otherwise your wall will be weak. It gives the wall tensile strength. Most builders forget them, so you need to be keen on this one. A BRC, BRC is a metallic mesh, a square that is put in the slab. As you cast the slab, you put it there. It's also to arrest tension, so it arrests any possible cracks in your slab. It's also important. BPM is a black polythene. It's also put there to trap moisture still in the slab. R8, uh, this is a uh, reinforcement. R8 is a type of reinforcement. These are the rings that are put in beams. We have T12. T12 is also a type of reinforcement to, to reinforce. It is a longitudinal member in, in the reinforcement. Also, T16, same thing. It's a type of bar, type of reinforcement steel. Binding wire, these are small, tiny wires that tie the reinforcement together. Hardcore, these are those big stones. Um, also, depending on the nature of the soil where you put in the slab, you may need them. So, always consult your technical person to guide accordingly. So, we have our substructure uh, costing us 39 million. Uh, we are now moving on to the next section, which has uh, columns and block work. So most of the material that we have in the substructure also feature here. So I will not uh, read the breakdown again. Apart from uh, the new ones, uh, for example, here we have our concrete blocks. Our uh, concrete blocks are actually preferred when you're doing machinery work. However, the reason why we don't use them in the foundation, in the substructure, is so we have bricks. Uh, these are absorb but have a high moisture absorbing capacity and uh, the not feed for the foundation for that reason however if you find yourself using them there is a way to, to deter that moisture absorption uh, we can always plaster uh, all around the wall and apply bitumenous paint or any other membrane that is waterproof. Uh, the reason why blocks are preferred is because normally the mortar you use is going to be less so you will, you will spend less on cement but also they move faster uh, so if you have gotten them from the right place they will even give a, a stronger masonry wall as compared to the ordinary clipping so they have their advantages so yeah, we have those. We have those that are 200 millimeters we did, and then we have uh, those that are 150. Uh, so you can see the quantities there. So we have uh, this section costing uh, an extra 23 million. So our cumulative amount is now at 62. And we are now moving on to the floor beams and lintels. Uh, a lintel is basically that beam around an opening around doors over over doors over windows those are called lintels uh, so 
same material let's just jump to the total we have an extra load of 16 million now I'll bring in our cumulative total be 78 million uh, first floor slab and stair is bringing us is at 34 and bringing that only to 113 uh, the roofing uh, you can see that different roofing members and the ceiling also is captured here in the roofing section uh, which is uh, costing us 16.5 bringing us to 129 uh, finishes this is uh, these are basically motor finishes uh, and we are basically looking at sand and sand and cements that is uh, a 12 million 12.8 Bring us to 142. Uh, we now have floor finishes. These are tiles and scratching. The total of nine. We have the painting. The painting is costing us 7.3. Now we have 159 as a cumulative total. The windows and doors. Uh, these are costing 32 million. These are actually very important. It's a very important uh, item during construction. So never neglect it. You can see the total here is. Is quite serious. So we have our total of 191 million for the main structure. Uh, this can always be plus or minus depending on the people you want to use. So, but this is within uh, the acceptable range. So, meaning anything around this value is okay. Uh, so, this is the same breakdown that we had for the for the other three structures, uh, you can see that the ground total, this middle one is the servant house, you can see it has a total of 23 million, and then we have a uh, yellow tree now in the total of uh, 13 million. So, this is basically the breakdown of the material shape you have, but as we do the material shape, we don't just uh, get these figures of it, this figures are derived from intensive calculations. Uh, so you can see in our Excel sheet there are other sheets. So these are the sheets that feed into the final sheet of the material schedule. So we calculate every every item individually then we link it to the summary. You can see these are the estimations of clusters. So the calculations behind scenes to tell you uh, the cement you need per cubic meter of cluster, for example, per motor. This is concrete. We also have, uh, depending on the ratio, the calculation will tell you how many bags you need per cubic meter of concrete. So all these other sheets support. The final sheet. So, as we design for you, we do this intensive calculation for you to make sure we estimate your construction as accurately as possible. All these are supporting the final material schedule sheet. Yes, so that is basically the wrap up of the post. Uh, let's finish the video, it has been overstretched. Let's finish it.